Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we're going to talk about some of the fixes and improvements that I would like to see on the Two Trees Sapphire Pro. This video is ostensibly for Two Trees, but I figured you guys would enjoy seeing it as well. So stay tuned. Okay, today we are going to talk about the improvements and fixes that I would like to see and have made on my Two Trees Sapphire Pro. All right, the first major problem I actually encountered was I could not home the printer. The switch could not press against the home. You can see there's a little extension here. That's what the switch homes against. I would like to see this be a little bit larger. So have it stick out a little bit. As you can see, I had to bend my switch out to get it to touch, okay? But it wouldn't home at all. And that's because during manufacturing, hopefully this is a one-time thing, this metal plate and just this metal plate was installed 180 degrees so this was over here that also caused these pulleys to be backwards i reversed them thinking why are they like that no it's because this was reversed okay so during manufacturing one of the employees installed this plate backwards all the rest this part was correct but this plate was backwards so if you get this printer and this tab here is over here and you can't get it to home properly here's what you have to do Remove the three screws that hold the hot end on. Remove these four screws, okay? Then on the underside here, you gotta remove these four screws on both sides. Now, when you take this apart, be careful. The bearing block can slide off the end of the rail, and if those bearing balls come out, you're gonna have a heck of a time putting it back together again. So secure that. Flip that metal plate 180 degrees with this bearing, and then leaving this facing the way it's already facing, that's why you have to detach it. So you flip that bearing plate around, screw it back in, put it all back together, you're done. All right. Now, one of the problems here is that this hits the wheel before it can fully home. Okay? And that is not good. Okay, come on, give me focus, please. There we go, got focus. Two trees, what I suggest. See how you have a second slit here on this block? Okay? If I don't push and mess up my printer, let me use a pointer so the pointer will get pushed out of the way. So you have this second slit. Make this second slit as big as this first slit. And then get rid of this beam of metal right here. Get rid of this all together so that the zip tie is actually connecting back here at the second slit. Okay? By connecting at the back of the second slit, you'll bring this zip tie into the interior space of this block which will allow this to make it all the way to the end stop without the zip ties impacting the pulley wheels okay so I'm gonna take a picture of that and I'm gonna draw it out separate right there okay the other issue these blocks here are junk whatever metal these bolts are made out of they strip so easily you look at them they strip now the good news is that doesn't really matter you don't have to tighten these because the frame structure itself captures the smooth rods between the two bearing blocks so that's nothing to worry about you don't need to worry about that um, you want to update your instructions to include instructions on how to adjust the pulley drives on the stepper motors inside here because one of them was in the wrong position so the belt was sitting at an angle I had to move that pulley drive down to bring it in line with the belt okay one was okay one was not okay so that's something that's going to you're going to want to look at for adjusting. Also want to talk about adjusting this. This um, <coughs> coupler was too low. So the shaft from the stepper motor stuck up too far inside. So you wouldn't be able to properly clamp this in place. You also don't want the shaft from the motor and the shaft for the lead screw touching each other. Because then they don't have that little bit of give they need. So I had to loosen this and lift it up a little bit. And then tighten this. Um... Okay, as you guys will see in that picture that I posted, we have actually been installing the belts incorrectly. Notice how there are two slots. You have this smaller inner slot and this larger outer slot. You're not supposed to put the belts on the outer slot. You're supposed to put the belt through the inner slot. And then the zip tie fits in the space where this larger slot is. I have a couple of issues with that since it could permit belt slippage. 
Um, so either way, make sure the zip tie is tight and make sure the belt teeth are facing each other. See how I have the belt teeth facing each other? This locks the teeth together and will prevent slippage. If you put the belt in backside to backside, it will slip very easily. Um, so put your belts on this inner slot, not the outer slot. That will bring the zip tie from here to here on the inside, which will stop the collision with the pulley wheels on the end and your printer will home correctly, assuming your plate is not backwards. So look at that picture carefully, you'll see what I'm talking about. If you have a Dremel, you can remove this little outer piece of metal here, this little outer bit right there, and that'll make it a lot easier to put the um, zip ties on. I've suggested to two trees that they simply remove that little outer rail in manufacturing. That'll make installation a lot easier and that'll make it impossible for people to install it on the incorrect slot. And I also suggested they include a picture in the instructions. The, um, you'll see the picture I included in this video right before you watch this segment. I already pasted the video in there. Um, there's an issue with parts cooling. I, I, sus I don't know exactly why there's a parts cooling issue because the original Sapphire did not have an issue with cooling and it has the exact same head design. I think I know why. The head is extremely quiet. The only noise you can really hear besides the very small hum of the printer is the power supply fan, which they don't control because they're buying that power supply off the shelf. I suspect they slowed these fans down, which is going to make them a lot less noisy, and it worked. This head is silent. It's very, very quiet. I'm very pleased by that. But I think they lowered the CFM of these fans too much, and so we're not getting sufficient cooling for the print parts. Um, they are working on that. I've already got confirmation they are working on a fix for that. I also suggested that they include a silicone sock. I will find out if the standard, you know, crowdy style silicone sock will fit this. If it does, I'll let you guys know. But that will also help with um, temperature deviations because these fans are blowing onto the heat block. And that will also help with part cooling because now not all that heat from that hot end is going to be going to the airflow for these fans. So that will help quite a bit. A magnetic plate would be advisable for this printer because of its constrained nature getting tools in here can be a little tricky not really it's pretty darn open as you can see but a magnetic flex plate would be nice two trees does have magnetic flex plates available for this on their site so if you order your printer from them you can also order the flex plate as well I'm going to suggest that they um, include that flex plate in their Amazon store as well so that you can buy the printer and the flex plate from Amazon if that is possible of course TH3D and wham bam also make plates this size. It's 235 by 235, which is an Ender 3 um, build volume. So if you get an Ender 3 build plate, it'll fit this printer. I love the fact that the filament they include is orange, because, well, orange is my favorite color. <laughs> I've actually suggested that they include a royal blue, meaning this color. Not because I like royal blue better, but simply because this printer is the sapphire. So it'd be nice if everything had a blue theme. That's why I suggest they also use blue um, tubing and blue sheathing for the wiring harness here as well. That would make a nice touch to make these blue. Um, I've also suggested that they include a packet of grease. I hope they could possibly do that because these can be quite noisy when it's doing its fast homing movement. Um, because they're pretty dry. Uh, mine's actually not bad. I had, mine was a little noisy at first, but it's not bad. Uh, my rod wasn't quite perfectly straight, but a little bit of pushing before I installed the bed, and I was able to get that rod perfectly straight. Um, most likely it's just deviation in the coupler, no big deal, and it probably wouldn't have caused any problem whatsoever because these uh, 12 millimeter smooth rods are incredibly strong, but I believe that helped reduce the squeaking. I also absolutely love the fact that they have now included proper pulleys both smooth and toothed for the belt drive that is absolutely excellent they work fantastically I don't see any bunching or binding like for example here you can see I'm riding a little bit high on that pulley so I just gotta lower this gear a smidge more so that the belts not riding up against the top edge of the pulley that's just a matter of trim and adjustment. These are so much better than the two washers with a bearing in the middle they were using before because they were chewing up the belts. I don't think this will chew up the belts at all. You can see 
they're riding very nicely no issues there I've suggested a couple of improvements on the otherwise excellent UI unlike a lot of touchscreen UIs this touchscreen UI actually allows you to adjust fan speed including some defaults 0 50 and 100 I would like to see 0 80 100 because typically what we'll do is we'll slow the fans down to 80% in order to reduce the amount of noise they produce. On this printer, until they fix the cooling issues, always run 100%. You can also do a fine-tune adjustment. I don't know if this is possible, but I suggested to see if they can change this to percentage. So it says 0 to 100 instead of 0 to 255. So in this case, 255 is 100%, while 128 is 50%. I've suggested, uh, if possible, can they change that to a percentage? I don't know if that's possible. That might be a firmware limitation. But the fact that we have fan control is excellent. A lot of the times when these manufacturers, <coughs> reality, <coughs> um, they forget to include the ability to actually adjust fan speed <laughs> in their touchscreen UI. You also have fine-tuned speed control, as well as fine-tuned temperature control for both heat bed and extrusion. So the touchscreen UI is very good and very responsive. I've also suggested to see if they could make the file list when you go to select a file to print a list of file names. You could probably only fit maybe five because you need to make each line thick enough for you to be able to touch. But that's fine. Five would be just fine as long as it was like all the way out to here. And then you have buttons over here to go up and down. Because right now it's little icons with little partial file names which are really annoying. I'd like to see more of the file name if that's possible. Otherwise, your printing UI screen is quite excellent. And it looks like they might even have plans for dual head at some point. At least the firmware is programmed for it and there is a stepper driver on the board. At least a socket available for it. Although absolutely not necessary, I have suggested that they look into the possibility of using a 2208 or the extruder. Because on a print like this, where I'm doing vase mode, with little or no retractions, it's completely not an issue. But on a print with a lot of retractions, you really start to hear that extruder motor going zzz, 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 as it makes its fast movements back and forth for retraction and push of filament. Uh, that is a BMG clone. So far, I've had no issues with it. It is working most excellent. And I like the quiet steppers. I mean, you're, you're listening to raw audio from the camera. This thing is quiet. I will actually put this in my bedroom. This will be sitting in my closet in my bedroom running because it's quiet enough that it won't give me a problem. I don't know how necessary this is. It might be completely unnecessary, but the way the Z end stop works is the limit switch taps the top of the bearing. Now this bearing is an uneven surface. You have an inner surface and an outer surface, the bearing and the retainer for your grease and your balls inside. Um, if possible, a cap on this, so that that is pressing against a, a fixed surface. Um, maybe it's a non-issue. So far, this is one of the most precise homing printers I've ever used. It homes so precisely every time that I could do multiple color files using multiple SDLs, even printing them days apart. And it homes precisely enough that I can print on top of a print that's already on top of the print bed. And it does it precisely very very impressive with that so that might be a non-issue to worry about that limit switch it might not have an issue going into this groove and changing your z height because so far it is homed precisely every time and i've done many prints so here are some of the prints i've done this is the cycloidal vase it's in the process of printing we are at 92 percent i also did my kitty cat no issues it printed flawlessly all the links move your tail wiggles I did this vase, it came out very, very nicely. I really like this one, this double helix one. Beautiful print. Not watertight, but I didn't expect this to be watertight. Then I also did this. I printed a little box. Now the box is actually really impressive because if you notice down there, it's not right. See how it's all screwed up down there? That's because I goofed and forgot to enable infill. So this is all zero infill. The fact that it finished at all is impressive. This printer did a nice job. So those are dead overhangs with no infill holding them up. That's impressive. Good job, Two Trees. That's a nice printer. 
very nice very clean print I didn't do any cleanup on any of these prints so you got two you have a complex and a simple curve vase mode print as you can see absolutely no salmon skin anywhere that print is baby butt smooth very very nice complex vase mode print with some nice sharp angles and then normal fill prints simple fill with print in place moving joints that shows that it has no problems with tolerances they move just fine and a complex print which I was actually surprised to print it as well as it did since the parts cooling is a little lackluster but this should have shown issues with parts cooling and it didn't this printed very nicely the Marvin on the other hand that one had parts cooling issues but that was also a much smaller print so the layers didn't have as much time to dry and cool and freeze in place but add-on here is an additional print that I made using um, a splendid blue glitter filament this one I did correctly so there is proper infill there so you can see that is nearly perfect there was some issue with printing this netting here you can actually hear the impacts because of the warped plastic and the head hitting it on the next layer but it did not fail it continued to print once they fix the cooling that'll take care of that but yes very nice print I'm very pleased with that I would also like to see a couple other changes um, on the UI I would like to see an option for flow rate or is that under filament no it is not oops I just paused it I think resume okay so if you go into filament it pauses interesting so I can do a pause and then do a resume although it does not retract no big deal though so you can pause and resume to do a filament change that's kind of cool but I would like to see flow rate in here so maybe under more have an option to adjust flow rate that's missing you've got the fan speed but you don't got the flow rate one other change that I need I'd like to see on the printer is this little change I made here so I would like to see two eight millimeter holes drilled into it wide enough to allow these wires to sit in between those holes and this will be your tension relief for your wires for your bed so you just put the wires between the holes put a zip tie through here the little skinny zip ties are no good for this you want to use a thicker zip tie like this otherwise you'll dig into the wires or the zip tie will dig into the metal and cut itself but if you guys at two trees could drill these two holes here there's your tension relief built into the printer all you'd have to do is have a little bit of slack here see I got a little bit of slack so it's not super tight and just crank this down with a zip tie to hold the wire in place and there is your tension relief for your wires for your bed this way your um, solder joints don't fail over time that's less likely on a core XY since the bed is not slinging back and forth but it does still flex those solder joints and that is a free fix all you gotta do is drill two holes that's about it this printer has been running continuously for the last what three days now since my stream it has not stopped printing and so far I don't have too many complaints they did not a bad job on this machine I look forward to seeing improvements overall very impressed I'm looking forward to getting myself a wham bam sheet to slap on this bad boy because this printer is going to get a lot of use if you have any questions ask below if you'd like me to point out something or focus on something in particular in the printer by all means let me know down below and I will make a little video for you or give you the response inside good proper springs good insulation on the bed bed is nice and flat this carriage is crazy strong I'm not going to move it because that would mess up the print if I moved it but this bed is very resistant to flexing thanks to this extremely strong Y carriage plate and these very stiff 12 millimeter rods and very tall bearing slides the LMU bearing slides here so you do not have to worry about this thing vibrating or jiggling while it's printing if you push on it it's going to move but under normal operation if this printer gets bumped not a problem it's going to print just fine I also notice how they've enclosed this front so the touch panel is recessed inside the face because they make an enclosure for this Hopefully you'll get to see that soon because I look forward to playing with the enclosure on this machine. Um, I also absolutely love the fact that they used these inserts here. 
because that's where my wires are. My wires are inside the rail. The same thing back here. My wires are inside the rail, including this entire wire harness. This entire thing is inside the rail. Look at that. That makes for such a neat and clean looking machine. This is probably the cleanest looking machine I've ever used as far as wire management. In fact, I'm going to deal with the finger cutting and splitting nightmare of putting that on just because it'll make that look so much cleaner. Fantastic. You guys did a good job on this. I look forward to more improvements to this machine.